Okay, we are going to solve some exponential equations that require logarithms. So that's why we learned about logarithms yesterday. First of all, let's review really quickly uh, those two warm-up problems. We want to solve those using a common base. So this is what we've done so far. We want 5 and 25 to have the same base. So that is a base of 5. Once they have the same base, we set their exponents equal and solve. So n equals negative 8. I could plug it back in to check. Uh, number 2, both sides here need to be changed because 27 is not a power of 9. 9 is 3 squared. And 27 is 3 cubed. Okay, now I have the same base. I need to multiply my exponents here. 2 times a plus 2 is equal to 3 times 4a minus 2. I need to distribute. And then solve for my variable. So... 1 is equal to a, or a is equal to 1. And again, I can plug it back in and check. I'm not going to take the time to do that. Now, sometimes it is not possible for us to get a common base on both sides. Uh, for example, look at number 3 there. 2 is on the left side, 61 is on the right side. 61 is not a power of 2, so we cannot get a common base. So the steps we're going to follow is we're going to isolate the exponential expression, we're going to write it in log form, and then we're going to solve and check for extraneous solutions. Uh, now, I'm also going to show you another method to solve by graphing. Uh, so that, that's also something that you can use, but I'm going to show you how to do it uh, algebraically first. So let's look at example number four. 8 to the m minus 7 is equal to 92. Now, in this case, uh, step number one does not apply. Isolate the exponential expression. It is isolated. There is nothing outside of the exponential here, everything is in the exponent. So we're going to go ahead and jump to writing this in log form. So that's what we practiced a little bit earlier. The base of the exponential is always the base of the log. The other stuff switch, switches places. Now, this is the whole point of, of having logarithms. Um, it gets that variable out of the exponent. It's the only way to get the variable out of the exponent is to change it to log form. And now we are able to move that 7. Now, you never, ever, ever change that 92 or whatever number is inside the log. That 7 does not get added to the 92. The 7 just gets tacked on to the end. Uh, so this is what we would consider to be the exact answer. Okay, that's the exact answer right there. Uh, now, we need to check this. So we need a decimal version of that. Uh, so we're going to use our change of base that we also practiced. So log of 92 divided by the log of 8 plus 7. We are going to get that decimal value from our calculator here. Log 92 divided by the log of 8 plus 7. So that is our approximate answer. M is approximately 9.175. Uh, and then we can store that as X to plug it back into our original equation to see if it does work. And it does. Okay, so this is the exact answer. This is really what I'm looking for. That's what you are likely to see as an answer choice. However, if you know how to use your change of base, and get the decimal approximation, then you can just plug in your answer choices and see which one, when you plug it into the equation, uh, makes that equation true. Now, let's look at solving by graphing. We did this a little bit with absolute value inequalities, so let's look at that in this case. You'll notice I have put in the left side of my equation right here. The right side, since it was just a constant, I had to put y equals. I'm going to get this out of the way. So I have two equations, so I should see two curves. Right now, I just see the exponential curve. So I'm going to zoom out. I know that I need to zoom out because my other number is 92. i got to get up to y equals 92 up here so that I can actually see where these two graphs intersect. And all of a sudden, it's now in my viewing window. So I can click. 
there is the intersection point and look at what we found 9.175 that was the decimal approximation uh, that we got here uh, by solving it correctly algebraically in the other scenario so uh, you can solve by graphing i do not mind if you use that method but you do need to be able to match that to the log form so you do need to understand change of base and how to put that in your calculator to be able to match up your answer choices there let's look at another example let's look at number seven okay here's a case where we do need to isolate the exponential expression because this right here is our exponential expression it's got two things it's got this seven and it has a minus in front of it so let's begin by subtracting the seven from both sides because seven minus seven is zero 18 minus 7 is 11. Now we've got to get rid of that negative in front. So we divide both sides by negative 1. Okay. Uh, now we can put it in log form. Log base 4 of negative 11 is equal to x plus 1. And we will subtract 1 from both sides. And we are going to see if we can get a decimal approximation from our calculator so that we can plug it back in to check. So let's type that in. Log is beside the 7. Log of negative 11 divided by the log of 4. Notice I made sure that I closed my parentheses after that negative 11 and after the 4. And when I press enter, it says non-real answer. And when I click go to, it brings me right here to this negative number. Guess what? You cannot take the log of a negative number. And here is why. Okay, look at that step right there. 4 raised to some power is equal to negative 11. It is impossible to raise positive 4 to a power and get negative 11. So this is a case where we have no solution no solution um, this answer right here does not work out because we're not allowed to take the log of a negative number let's see how this would show up on the graph okay so let me make those go away and bring these two up uh, and i'm going to go i'm going to zoom i'm going to hit the home button over here so i can zoom back in because i was way zoomed out um, i still can't see both my curves now i can okay so see what happens here's my exponential curve down here here is the line. Those two are never going to meet. If they never intersect, then there's no solution. Okay, let's look at another one, number 10 here. We need to isolate this. We need to, again, the first step is to subtract a 7. Surely coincidental. Then we divide by negative 2. So 5 to the p is equal to 35. We need to write this in log form. Log base 5 of 35 is equal to P. So that's our exact answer. We are going to write out our change of base so that we can get an approximate answer so that we can plug it back in and check. So let's get that out of the way. Log 35 divided by log 5. And I store it as X. Negative 2 times 5 to the x plus 7. Notice I didn't put any parentheses here because the variable is the only thing in the exponent, so I don't need any parentheses. And that gives me negative 63. I didn't write down my approximate when I got it here. Okay, so this is the exact answer. This is the approximate answer. So I should, if I go to my graph here and I make... Here's the left side of my equation. Here's the right side of my equation. I'm going to need to zoom out down here to negative 63. Click on my intersection point, 2.209. 2.209. So I can get that from my graph uh, just as easily as I can from the calculator. And I don't have a problem. If you use the graph to find the answer, that is fine. But you have to, if your answer choices are in log form, You've got to be able to put this into the calculator to be able to match it with the decimal value that you got from the graph.